All right, so here goes my 82 Chevy pickup that I want to turn into a buggy. And there's two things I want to do with it. I want to make it as light as possible, and I want to make it easy to work on. So I want to remove anything that's unneeded weight and stuff that's in the way. And the first thing that comes up is the heater box, or the whatever you call this, the box that has the heater core and air conditioned stuff in it. This truck is never going to have AC again, so I'm going to get rid of this. And to take this off, well, let's get started by unplugging this plug on there. And then there's a ground that's bolted on. Remove this plug too. It's stuck. And then there's a ground. And then we got these heater hoses. Alright, for anybody that wants to see how these things come out, I know there's a lot of things missing. There's supposed to be some aluminum pipe with some kind of AC component. Well, that's missing. Sorry about that. But anyway, let's continue. So we have the ground, and on, on mine, it's a 10 millimeter. Take that real quick. the side and now you have this wire that has one more plug down here it has one more plug right there set that aside I thought these are supposed to be 10 millimeter but this is a 11 or maybe a 7 16 take this one off real quick all right now I got that bolt loose or nut get these wires out of here kind of going there for now but there are these two hoses two water hoses I'm gonna disconnect those real quick You got a hose stuck, usually it works to take some pliers and break it loose. No, that's not going to work. Just going to cut it then. And deal with it later. Alright, so now that I got everything disconnected from it on the outside, I'm just going to take off all the bolts that go around the perimeter of it. They go, they go around the perimeter of this thing. And this is exactly what I'm talking about to make stuff easier to work on. This thing has two more studs on the bottom that are long, long studs with nuts on them. There's at least two more on the bottom. If you want to take this off. You can see on the inside of where they have inserts that go through. So yeah, there's two more on the bottom. Okay, I got a swivel. At first I had a long 11 millimeter. Now I have a short one. But there's two bolts under there that are very hard to get to. After spending like 30 minutes in a very uncomfortable position I got one of them loose and the other one is becoming a problem I'm not sure if you can see that or not but that's one of the studs the other one is right there which let's back up which is right straight under there that's where it's at the problem with having is this is the thing that's supposed to hold it, uh, hold the stud. It's spinning whenever I try to take it off now, and that's kind of a problem. Okay, this is what I did to hold to hold it so I can get the the nut loose. I just clamped it on there so that way it stays up against there, and I was able to remove the bolt. 
So now that all the bolts are loose all the way around and those two bottom ones, this should just come off. And it does. Oh! And I smashed it. I probably ruined it because I just smashed it. So if you ever do that, don't squeeze too hard. It's copper, it's soft. And that really hurt. So now we're on the inside. I promise I took one of these apart before, but I just forgot how exactly what's on there. And this is like on the very right hand side by the door. It has one screw right there. There's that one 10 millimeter screw right there. Let me get that out real quick. Okay, after that screw's loose, everything kind of drops out. Be careful if you're gonna, if you plan on restoring yours and saving this. Try to be a little bit more careful than I was. But anyway, after you take that one out, all those bolts I showed on the on the outside, this drops down. And if your truck was more intact, it'd probably have maybe more vents and stuff hooked up. And I apologize for that one because I can't really show that because it's not here. But maybe this might be helpful anyway to show those two hidden screws on the bottom and what actually needs to come out. Alright, so what do we have here? We have a vacuum line that hooks up right here. And when you connect, when you disconnect stuff like this, especially on these, try to remember what came off of what because it gets very, very confusing. Maybe you should record it when you do it so that way you remember it. Here goes another vacuum line. And now all we have is this thing that hooks up to the vent. I think that's a flipper that goes between cold and hot. To take that out, all you have to do is take this screw loose. And then the, this other stuff just slips apart. Okay, on this one, the last thing I'm doing, removing this bolt. It's a 9 30 seconds. It's probably some kind of millimeter. I'm not real sure. This doesn't fit that great. But it's enough to turn it. I'm going to remove this. And this stuff just slides off. And now the heater core box is removed. The whole point of this was to lose a little bit of weight. That probably took off about 30 pounds or whatnot. And now I have this big empty space that I can mount some stuff here. Just put a flat plate on it to seal that up. When you do this, you have to seal that up because you don't want all your smoke and stuff going there. So this has to be sealed up, but I'll get to that later. I know this video wasn't very complete, but uh, a lot of the stuff was missing. And really all I was doing was trying to take it out. But if you wanted to change your heater core, it's right inside here. You just have a few bolts around the perimeter and the heater core is right inside there. And if you do that, be careful you don't squish yours. Learn from my mistake. I, would, I just wasn't being careful enough and just squeeze it too hard. Really didn't take that much pressure. If anybody wants me to go further and take this apart, I will. But I'm just going to end this video right here. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. The end.